physically. A healthy mind and body together with a clean environment make a well-being man. And a well-being man contributes to the growth and development of the society positively. This is why Prince Dapwa Abiodun prioritized the health and wellness of the people of Ogun State in his agenda to sustainably build up the state. Governor Dapwa Abiodun's administration has relentlessly tackled the issue of waste management and basic health care headlong to achieve its desire of governing a healthy state. In view of this, Giant Strides this week will be looking at the activities of Prince Dapwa Abiodun led administration in the areas of provision of basic health care and a clean environment through effective waste management system. The Ogun State Governor, Prince Dapwa Abiodun, launched the Basic Health Care Provision Fund Program and the Ogun State Informal Sector Health Insurance Scheme as part of the state's policy on affordable and accessible health care delivery for all the people of the state. <laughs> At the event, Prince Dakwa Biodun affirmed that social welfare was a vital part of the Ishaya mantra aimed at improving the well-being of the citizenry. At the administration, we have a blueprint that defines our social contract with the good people of the state with the acronym Ishaya, I for infrastructure, S for social women and welfare, E for education, Y for youth employment and job creation, and A for agriculture. The interest is gathering to know that the importance of social welfare, which is the second pillar of a mantra, is our commitment to the provision of the required infrastructure and measures towards ensuring the well-being, wellness, and welfare of our people at all times. In fact, as an important kernel of this contract, the provision of qualitative healthcare service delivery to the people is a mark of a eloquent statement of intent. That is, only a healthy populace can enjoy the provision of infrastructure and tap into the available economic potentials of Idea State. He said the scheme, Christine Ilera Dero, was to serve both formal and informal sectors to access basic health care seriously. Consequently, it is a sense of duty and fulfillment that I launch this basic health care provision fund and the commencement of the informal sector health insurance scheme that I am today christening Ilera Dero. Ilera Dero. And henceforth, when we say Ilera Dero, you respond at Joshi Bubuani. Ilera Dero. Governor Abiodun, after officially registering for the scheme, urged the residents to seize the opportunity created by the state government to register and become a partaker of the program. The 12,000 per annum payment is payable in 1,000 naira per month. So it's not unnecessarily burdensome. And like KBAC had clarified, 1,000 naira per month is just about 35 naira per day. 35 naira per day. I mean, come on. Everybody can afford that. And I also want to thank the speaker for his suggestion that members of the house should take ownership. They should, 
you know, pay on behalf of their constituents. I expect um, all my commissioners to do the same. You know, um, your commissioners representing your people um, and also our leaders, rather than just dashing out money to our people, let us, you know, just like Baba Kabisi has said, let us, you know, pay towards their their provision. And for the family scheme, which is meant to be 48,000 naira per annum, it translates to 4,000 naira per month. And I'm sure that, you know, all of us can afford to pay 4,000 naira for, per month for a, a family scheme. The Executive Secretary, National Health Insurance Scheme, Professor Nasir Sambo, was glad that the state health delivery system is mirrored after the federal government policy on affordable and accessible health care delivery for all Nigerians. I'm very delighted to be part of this historic moment in the nation's efforts towards improving the quality of life of the good, pe good people and hospitable people of all those states. I especially thank His Excellency, the, Gov the Executive Governor of Ogun State, Prince Dapo Abioni MFR, for the privilege to witness the launch of the Basic Healthcare Provision Fund and implementation of informal sector health insurance scheme in the Gateway States. This is in alignment with the objective of achieving universal health coverage, which is one of the top priorities on the global agenda as well as integral part of sustainable development goals. In pursuit of this goal, the present administration of President Muhammad Buhari GCFR is working assiduously to ensure that every Nigerian has access to affordable quality healthcare services. The State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Tomi Koka, at the launch, took time to explain the program, adding that it was aimed at ensuring that residents in the state had access to affordable health care services. The launch of the Basic Health Care Provision Fund is to ensure the provision of qualitative, affordable health care service to Ogun State residents with major emphasis on the poor, the vulnerable in the society, such as pregnant women, children under five, the elderly above the age of 65 and the disabled. This laudable program is to, is to be implemented by the government through Ogun State Health Insurance Agency in partnership with the Ogun State Primary Health Development Agency. Through the support of this administration, Ogun State has fulfilled all conditions to qualify for this federal government initiative Hence the launch that we are holding today. The Executive Secretary, Ogun State Health Insurance Scheme, Dr. Afolabi Dosumu, stated that the program is backed up by the extant law for sustainability and viability, adding that the program is meant for all categories of people, irrespective of race, gender, religion, socioeconomic status, and political affiliation. That insurance has come to stay. It's the way forward for our health system. We encourage every one of us that are here to please help us spread this good news. Because the issue of going to the chemist, going to the patent dealer, going to um, an hospital and dipping your hand in your pocket to pay. If you look at how much you spend every month and how much you spend every year, you know that this is a good deal. It's a win-win situation. In the same vein, waste management system is another area that is essential for a healthy environment and citizens' well-being. In view of this, the Ogun State Waste Management Authority sprang into action to live up to the expectation of creating it as an important agency of government. Mr. Ola Oresoya is the Special Advisor to the Governor on Environment. He spoke more on the strategies to be adopted to achieve Ogwama's objectives for a healthy environment, spelling out the obligations of various stakeholders. We need to carry the community along in all our actions. So this meeting is to apportion roles, what we expect the communities to do. We are communicating through the CDCs and the CDS, and uh, what we expect local government to do, and uh, what they expect us to do in government. 
at the state government and what we expect the local government to do. So you can see the different levels of uh, uh, the consultation that happened. We have the local governments here, we have the CDA and the CDCs, and we have the market leaders, and we also have the state government officials that are here. And all we are doing is to talk about sanitation and waste management in particular. Sanitation both in the public places, the markets, the public places, in our garages, and also in our communities. How we want to join hands together to make sure that whatever we are doing right now will make our environment to be a lot better. Mr. Oresoya expressed his displeasure over the dumping of refuse on roadsides and medians by citizens. We're going to have uh, community boys that uh, will be able to bring refuse out from those inner areas. So we'll engage the youths in those communities. So the days when truck will come, they will go around from, you have clans, we, we, we have a lot of traditional areas where most of them are settled in clans. So they will go within the, the area, uh, bring their bag refuse out and drop inside the van. So where there's a will, there's a way. So we are trying to channel a way out to make sure that we service everybody both in com organized communities and also in uh, clustered communities. So we, everybody must get service, but this, the alternative is not to take refuge to the mineral road. We will not agree on that. Our public infrastructure is not dustbin. Our drainage is not dustbin. Our road is not dustbin. So we are not going to take it. And enforcement is starting massively. So everybody here, we have all agreed. Any market not cooperating, the market leaders have agreed on sanctions. The communities have agreed on sanctions. So the local government are ready for sanctions. And the state government will not shy away from applying sanctions where it is required. The administration of Prince Dapwa Biodon places more emphasis on premium of life Efforts were taken to combat building collapse across the state. The State Ministry of Physical Planning and Urban Development also signed a Memorandum of Understanding with stakeholders in the built industries in the state. You know, at the same time, we are going to stage the government and also open their signatures. The Commissioner for Physical Planning and Urban Development Town planner Tunji Odunlami said one of the policy reforms of the present administration at preventing building collapse beth the signing of the memorandum of understanding. Very important are uh, the many policy reforms across the board that form the bedrock of this physical development activities. One of these policy reforms is what has the back the event of today which is the signing of a memorandum of understanding between the Ogo State Government and the Building Collapse Prevention Guild limited by a guarantee for the, the Ogo State Chapter. It has been established that collapse of buildings is caused by faulty designs, use of quartz rather than appropriate building industry registered professionals, both the design and construction of buildings and other structures, use of substandard building materials, an approved change of design during construction, not adherent to building approvals and permits, and cutting corners by building owners or developers to cut down costs. While the challenge of faulty designs has to a large extent been reduced through proper vetting of plans during the permit processes taken by government regulatory offices, what has remained a recurring challenge is the building construction stage where all the other illegalities are perpetrated. This speaks to the need for regular oversight supervision of building project sites by government regulatory agencies to discourage and necessarily sanction such illegalities. However, these agencies have come under very intense public criticism for their inability and lack of adequate capacity, indeed, bordering on inefficiency, which has provided opportunities for virtually everyone that is involved in construction sites to perpetrate illegalities from the owner, developer, to 
artisans, to material suppliers, and sadly, to registered professionals who owe the immediate responsibility and duty to ensure that such legalities are not perpetrated. He explained how the state government value lives, property, and security of the citizens. It is not an unexpected that governments cannot provide all the way with all for its building regulatory agencies to police all and every building sites which their responsibility entails. This has brought about the imperative for a collaboration by government with the citizenry through whistleblowing, but especially with the organized and recognized private sector professional organizations to fill the personnel and logistic gaps in its regulatory and enforcement responsibilities. This is what has brought us here today. As a responsible and responsible government that values the lives, safety, security, and economic prosperity of the citizens who are its much valued assets. His Excellency Prince Dabuabiru MFR, Governor of Ogun State, directed me to look for solutions to the menace of any collapse and proactively prevent its occurrence in the state. In September 2020, the state government through the Ministry of Fiscal Planning and Urban Development and the State Building Production Management Authority began consultations with the Building Collapse Prevention Guild of the State Chapter. This group took it upon itself the social and civic responsibility of preventing building collapse and the attendant human and material wastages. It had hitherto been active as a whistleblower, alerting relevant government agencies of illegal buildings, distressed buildings, and use of substandard materials by developers and homeowners. It is this rich aggregation of professionals using the Ogun State Chapter that the state government decided to leverage on to achieve its safer, its safer building objectives. In furtherance of his commitment to a new government order in the state, founded on best practices, infrastructure renewal, expansion, and upgrade, His Excellency in Council on 13 February 2020 approved the establishment of the Ogun State Building Production Management Authority, a special purpose agency of the Ministry of Physical Planning and Urban Development, saddled with the following responsibilities. Implementation of building production management policies and programs, administration of building production in all its ramifications, including authorization of building construction, inspection of building production, including material evaluation and testing, state certification of building production and keeping of records, issuance of certificate of completion and fitness for use, registration and administration of accredited building production inspector scheme promotion and organization of artisanal training programs, enforcement of the provisions of the Ogun State Urban and Regional Planning and Development Law and Ogun State Building Production Management Regulations, service of building contravention, stop work, sealing up and demolition notices, identification and removal of distressed buildings to prevent building collapse, removal of illegal developments and non-performing buildings, Conduct of research in building construction management materials and methods. Establishment and control of district and zonal building production management offices. Cooperation with the state planning and development permit authority to achieve zero tolerance of illegal developments, stakeholders consultations, enlightenment and publicity. It is in carrying out of these responsibilities, specifically the inspection and state certification of building construction, building material evaluation and testing, and identification and evaluation of distressed, dangerous, abandoned and uncompleted buildings and structures to avoid collapse that gave birth to this collaboration. There is no gain saying that the present administration is working assiduously to ensure healthy living in a healthy and secure environment for a better Ogun state. Igbe gai pinle ogun, a joshi gbo gbo wani.